We are now on House Bill 1543. Again, I remind the committee that we have 23 minutes to get this work done. 1546. 1546, thank you. Okay, that's the one we're talking about. What is this deadline? We're going on vacation for two weeks here. What's the House, uh, second committee bills on the calendar. Second committee bills must be done, must be out by noon today. That's right. Okay. <laughs> a little different interpretation of the rules than we normally had. But <laughs> I've only been here a couple of years, so I don't really understand. <laughs> I've never been a chair before. I didn't have to worry about it. Well, there you go. Same rules are always there. I don't think out and available at the speaker's office. All right, let's move on. Don't worry about the bills. Yeah.
um, and put into 1546. We then had a public hearing on 1546. It went to a subcommittee that was chaired by Representative Cartwright. Mm -hmm. I believe Representative Luther, Representative Schmidt were on it. I spoke to the committee. We went again over the entire title um, completely identified the issues that were raised, made a few changes, um, made sure that there were, as far as we could tell, no unintended consequences, um, and uh, some additions were made. We did remove, um, if you go to page two on the back of the sheet you've got, they added repealing RSA 306 colon two relative to taxes, which gives religious societies the ability to tax their members. Um, because there's a feeling in the subcommittee that that was an unused and potentially inappropriate um, use of the power of the state in support of religious societies. Um, and it was prepared as an amendment by Representative Cartwright um, and reflects the, um, I believe, unanimous 3 0 of the committee. Um, and I feel comfortable with having reviewed these statutes on multiple occasions now, feeling that um, if um, the pieces that we are repealing um, have not been used in some cases well over 200 years and are quite obsolete, and in other cases um, remove what are clearly um, specific laws related to specific religions, such as the Quakers or the Shakers, that are uh, or the Episcopals, um, which are inappropriate in our statutes, and it's time that we, as part of the function of this committee, remove those sections. Um, and so I feel very comfortable with the work that's been done on all the committees, including the public hearings, and hope that this committee will support this amendment and move this bill forward to the floor, and that eventually we can repeal all of these obsolete laws. Sure. Yeah. Are these, were these ones a part of 1553, and those are the ones that had no. controversy to them? No. 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 I, well, I'm, I'm curious, why is the late arrival of this, if it has been something that's been studied all summer long? Different pieces. The um, subcommittee that Representative Davenport focused on was what we call Deadwood statutes. For instance, there are laws that say a report should be prepared by October 1st, 1993. And so clearly you can identify those by the date. And they did not a comprehensive through all of the RCs, but they did quite a chunk where they found those sorts of date obsolescence pieces. My, my subcommittee focused on multiple areas where we actually took titles and reviewed them. Out of the four areas we did, two became bills that went to policy committees to ask them to create study committees to start reviewing this. One went to municipal and county, and then this one, because it's religious societies, came here. This is actually going through the statutes line by line and finding what is just plain obsolete, not de obsolete, but just laws that are not in use. I'm just curious why you're proposing an amendment to a bill that takes a lot of controversy. It's a clean bill. It actually is the opposite. This was, and I will speak to that one when we deal with the other amendment, but just to be clear, this is the original bill having been reviewed by multiple people, this is essentially a housekeeping bill that removes obsolete language. The other amendment is the controversial piece, and I will address that when we get to that. Amendment. As part of our recodification duties, we, uh, the subcommittee looked at um, a specific section of law, recodified it to clean language, it came in, it got reviewed. After that review, it was adjusted again to be as clean and, and as uncontroversial a rewrite as possible. That is this amendment. There is also a controversial amendment that we've heard testimony of before earlier. I guess I don't understand why it's not separate legislation as opposed to an amendment. But it's been reviewed so much and been so much in the public forum. Re Representative, I would, I would absolutely glad to speak to that when we deal with that, that amendment. If we could dispose of this amendment first, I would appreciate it. And that amendment and this amendment, the two types you're dealing with, the two numbers you're dealing with? Are we 0994 is the current amendment we are doing. Okay. The amendment you're talking about is 0973. No. 
No, I'm not, I'm not talking about that at all. I consider that a her question is, why is this an amendment and not the bill itself? That's cases? correct. Uh, because it cleans up language from the original bill. From the original 1546? 1546, yes. If you compare it, you would see that there was um, one, one change to on, on line 11 of this amendment that adds consisting of 10 or more unrelated individuals. And then, as I mentioned on page two, there's the addition of one additional line being repealed, which is on line 11. Actually, on line 11 on both sides. So that's the only changes from the original bill, as far as I understand. That might be one of the cleanup. But other than that, that's the only changes that are being done to the original bill. Spent quite a lot of time on this bill, and I'm glad that other eyeballs, Representative Hartwright, Representative Luther, Representative Schmidt, took the time to continue the discussion. Oh, oh, point of Bart Clark. Yes, thank you. Um, so, if, is there any further discussion on this amendment? That being so, will the clerk please take the roll? Rather, make sure you note down the numbers. Yes, all right, that's that one right there. Thank you. Uh, Sobrowski? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cone? Yes. Perkowitz, yes. Krasuski? Yes. Luther? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Hawkins? Yes. Bates? Yes. Serlin? Yes. Dollar? Yes. Keynes? No. Cooney? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. So if there is still 15 of us, that is 14 to 1. Fourteen to one. Okay. Is there a motion in regard to uh, amendment? Give me a number. Order number seven three eight. Is there a motion? A motion. All to pass. Second. Thank you. Okay, it's Representative Cohn and then Representative Thomas. With regard to um, my comment to Representative Cohn, as the original bill sponsor, and you do reference to, yeah. reference to Representative Serlin, who I believe is on the original bill as well, um, I am concerned with adding Amendment uh, 0973H to what is essentially a housekeeping bill. Well, I recognize that um, it may well be considered to be germane because they are both about religion. Um, I do personally find this to be a concern. Um, it does take a non-controversial cleanup bill and politicize it. And as the prime sponsor, I I do have an issue with that, and so I will be voting against this amendment um, to to essentially make my own right of conscience stance here and say I do not believe this correct. Brief, please. I absolutely, strongly, and enthusiastically support the amendment. The freedom of religion is the uh, uh, issue here. Religion, religious freedom, and this protects that right, that that freedom. And I'm 100 percent behind this. Uh, Representative Brown and then Schmidt. I feel the same uh, discomfort that uh, Representative Cohn feels. Uh, I feel uh, my Democrat uh, friend's discomfort. I will vote for the amendment, but with some discomfort. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We never really fully resolved the issue of germaneness, and this Amendment is a major policy change. I object to it being attached to a housekeeping bill. This is something that needs to be fully vetted and brought up at another time. It doesn't belong with this bill. Um, I appreciate that comment. I, I think that it is, uh, I understand that individuals have the power to declare it germane, but uh, it is absolutely not germane on the Middle East House Green Bill. I, I do want to point out for the record, I'm also a sponsor, I'm a co sponsor of the original legislation. Uh, I'm unable to have my name removed from that legislation, uh, and so I will comment on that on the floor of the House. I 
couldn't disagree more with the Honorable Vice Chair. This is not about religious liberty. Uh, we have heard testimony that indicates both uh, that religious entities or anyone uh, who has any problem with the current insurance mandates in the state have multiple ways in which to have their religious rights respected and preserved. They may elect not to offer health insurance at all. They may elect to self-insure. They may elect to offer health insurance with no prescription drug program at all. And what is being asked for by the sponsors is that individuals of a particular faith or conscience somehow have some right to access insurance uh, industries in the free market, and in making that choice, which they are not forced to make, that they somehow have an additional right to push their particular beliefs and morality essentially into the free market. And contrary to the about equal protection, that creates an unequal protection situation where they're being given an exemption that nobody else is eligible for. I further uh, would have it uh, remind everybody that the United States Supreme Court has found all the way back to 1879 that the freedom of religious expression is not absolute. Once you enter into the public space, your particular rights can be compromised if it's in fact for a valid state interest or if it's in a matter of applicable law. She can vote. No, she was not here when the question was put. Uh -huh. She can't vote on her amendment. She can vote on the bill. I uh, believe the motion for the bill was made first so that we could hear the. Okay. But the motion to the motion of the bill as amended is a new motion and she's right. we'll be in the room at the time. I would agree. Sure. Okay. Um, I won't count that against the time wise. No. Uh, the, uh, I will do my best, but this is a very one one of the primary objections I think we should have as a committee speaking and talking fast is that this is being ramrodded through without a full discussion. Uh, no one's religious liberties have been encumbered or compromised to date. If they have a claim of same happening then they have only to look to the United States Supreme Court, which again and again and again has said that religious liberty is not absolute. The Constitution is the law of the land, yes, but as far back as 1879, when the Mormon Church sued over the question of polygamy as a religious right, the United States Supreme Court said no, that the laws of this land trump that expression of religious freedom. And since there is no current harm being suffered by these individuals, and they wish only to have access to a free market and to have their way with it, I can't find a single compelling reason to vote for this language. And my last point is, the significant breadth of this language, it's not just about a religious entity or organization. Any employer, a manufacturing entity, could simply say, I personally, as the CEO, believe that you shouldn't have access to X, Y, and Z. I have no actual affiliation with the church, and yet suddenly we would have codified that that's okay. And I think that that's, that's absolutely reprehensible. This language is too broad. It has not had a full debate, which is why we shouldn't be passing it right now. And I strenuously object. Thank you, Representative Dollar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to make a comment about question um, about the law being in effect for 12 years and nobody has taken it to court or could see fit to complain about it or change it in 12 years. It was in the testimony um, that this was um, brought to the attention of people because of a political ploy, an election year ploy by the Obama administration, but I would submit that this is also an election year ploy and that's why it's being brought up so quickly and also I would I uh, also request that the chair take up um, Claire Ebel's request to have this looked at by the state Supreme Court for constitutionality to save us a very expensive lawsuit, which is sure to come if this happens. I appreciate it. Uh, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would also mention, in, in addition to what Representative Dollar has said, that the California, when the California law was, was challenged, it was thrown out based on, on equity of prescription coverage. If you're going to cover prescriptions, you must cover contraceptives. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I actually agree that there's some discrimination going on here. 
but it seems to me that the discrimination is by some religious leaders who are attempting to use the power of the government to uh, coerce and control the behavior and individual conscience of their faithful when they cannot control it from the world. Thank you. The chair would uh, make one statement. Uh, the reason I accepted this as germane is that inasmuch as we are correcting uh, statements in our current statutes that affect one denomination at a time in particular, uh, under our religious titles that our insurance statutes also uh, have an effect on one denomination in particular. And that I find repugnant to our Constitution, irrespective of how any Supreme Court may have ruled in regard to the Constitution of the United States. That being said, uh, I will be making recommended suggestions to the Senate as to broadness, and um, the Senate have, has not failed to seek opinions of the Supreme Court even when uh, I have thought they ought not. And it is the opinion of the House that we judge our own constitutionality. Thank you. So, and that is, a, I mean, other than something that, that we are really in a quandary about, but the leadership of the House is not in quandary about this. If there's no further discussion, I would ask the clerk to take the roll. The question before us is ought to pass on Amendment 0973H. Sobrowski? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cohn? No. Clerk votes yes. Brzezowski? Yes. Luther? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Hawkins? Yes. Bates? Yes. Serlin? No. Dollar? No. Keynes? No. Cooney? No. Schmidt? No. Mr. Chair? Yes. <clears throat> I want to suggest this. Do you, want to try, do you want to try and write a minority report on this? That's your yes. amendment. Okay. okay. We're still the final. Oh, we have the off pass as amended. I'm sorry. And <laughs> on this off pass amendment, as amended, is Cartwright? Yes. 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 Because it's a modified motion. Ought to pass as amended. Oh, I don't, Donald, do I have a motion on that? Yes, yes, because we're working on it. You're still working on your original motion. Okay. Which, which, original you, which, you, which, you, which you propose. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sobrowski? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cartwright? Yes. Cohn? No. Clerk votes yes. Krasuski? Yes. Luther? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Hawkins? Yes. Bates? Yes. Serlin? No. Dollar? No. Keynes? No. Cooney? No. Schmidt? No. Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay, get these into the our committee assistant. What is that? It's 10 to 6. What is it? 10 to 6. Get in there and get these first written. Pardon my comments? No. Uh, we are out of the next session. Thank you.